LA Art Show welcomed more than 50,000 art enthusiasts to the LA Convention Center last year, and this year celebrated its 20th anniversary. After being spectators last year, we decided to become part of the action. We interviewed three galleries with exciting pieces that caught our eye amongst the crowd. We hope you have as much fun watching as we did filming. Today's the third day of the show, it's Friday the 16th. So we literally just put up these three pieces by Nelson de la Nunez because we sold a few others that were on the wall earlier. So this is the new series of the Monopoly Man. So this one shows the actual stock market crash of October 29th. This is an actual newspaper clipping from that day and it's called the, called the Boardroom. Uh, this one is from April 22nd, 1833, when the market just shot up. So on that day, everyone was starting to celebrate. The country was feeling really good about itself. And um, this is just a great piece. It's, it's actually my personal favorite, uh, not only because it's, it's the up market, everyone wants the up market, but I just like the character and it's, it's just a happy piece. This piece has, uh, it was done also by Nelson, has um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually here yesterday and uh, likes the piece, we're talking, negotiating with it. And uh, he said that this photograph was done of him in 1969 in uh, Venice Beach. So here, here's another one called Cocktail Lounge. So, uh, and this was literally finished, this, he only finished painting this two days before the fair. And uh, it's a great piece, kind of depicting uh, uh, New York in the 1940s. So come on over here. It's, it's not, he's, never, he's never really around, because he's a little shy, but I mean, hey Gary, what are you eating? Cheeseburger. Gary John is the world's most dangerous artist. Um, these are Gary's right here. So these are uh, comics from anywhere from the 1940s. That he, got, he specializes like from 1940s into the 1970s. And you got the, the original Mickey Mouse from 1939. Felix the Cat, Tricks from the Serial Tricks uh, uh, Frosted Corn, Astro Boy, Underdog. Now, these two right here, these are collaboration pieces. Now, these are collaborations between Michael Gorman and Gary John. Very cool. So, and th these are some of Michael Gorman's pieces over here. Ballerina. Uh, Michael Gorman's sister is actually uh, a dancer for many years with the New York City Ballet. So this one, this one right here, just for a second, is a, um, a collabor collaboration piece with Karen Bystedt, the photographer for the uh, the Lost Warhols that uh, we did a show last month. Um, this is my original photograph of Andy Warhol, which I took in 1982. And um, Peter and I did this at Windward Walls. Um, and what this is is a silk screen on top of my photograph. And then um, angel dust, silver angel dust on top of it. And Peter works a lot with collage. So what he did as well is he did some Polaroids of my photographs. And he, you know, stuck them on this, this piece. So, um, but in some of the other pieces that were more collage, there were dollar bills, he put his own check in. So we actually did um, 17 pieces together, um, Peter Tunney. And, but this is actually one of my favorites. It's beautiful. It's, Andy with Silver Skull. Well, Peter is, is an amazing artist, and what he explained to me, um, this image actually comes from a 1929 encyclopedia, but I just like the organic process of taking my raw thought photograph and then combining it with his vision and his art, um, so it becomes mixed media. I'm very excited about the concept of mixed media and collaborating with other artists. Um, so, you know, that's where my idea of Andy Go Street came about, and now I'm kind of getting my hands dirty. I'm cutting out stencils, I'm starting to spray paint, and, you know, so, so it's a beautiful journey. This artist is Min Sent Min. Min Sent Min is a very, very interesting artist, highly influenced by um, pop art. Um, and what you'll see in a lot of his works are these very interesting symbols. These are actually gambling symbols. And if you stand kind of a far distance from the art, it looks like, you know, snow. But when you get close, you see these very, very interesting symbols. 
And the reason why he incorporates these symbols has a lot to do with the military dictatorship in which he grew up. It had a huge control over the economy. There was very little outlet for expression. And in a lot of Asian cultures, gambling is a way communities get together. And it's an underground economy. It's very, very exciting. So he incorporates these symbols as a way to kind of remember, pay attention to um, the way in which they express themselves during a very, very difficult time um, in their history. I mean, this piece in particular, it's very, very flat, so it has a very kind of a pop aesthetic, but what I really, really love about it um, is the use of color. Um, you know, the wonderful, the wonderful symbols, you know, surrounding the entire piece, the layering, so you see the kind of the thickness of, of the, the symbols on the bottom and then it becomes very flat at top. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. We're looking at up to 50, 60 photos compiled together very loosely. Um, the idea is you can still have your New York City bookcase um, digitally. It's human, it's analog, it's loosely constructed, just like a real bookcase lived in. Um, the metallic paper is warm and generous with the light, and it gives it just a, a little bit of surrealness and soft edges, um, hence the name Dream Bookscapes. I think the way that they engage people, the information gathering is a lot like the metaphor of what digital is doing to the book. So, it's a kick in the stomach for those people that collect books and that like books because books won't exist in 300, 400 years. So that very kick in the stomach is what's artful um, and poignant about the statement.